वेलकम टू नेट बुक स्टडी दिस इज वीकली करेंट अफेयर्स कंपाइलेशन लेट्स गेट टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ दिस द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल टॉक्स अबाउट लद्दाख अटोनोमस हिल डेवलपमेंटल काउंसिल द न्यूज आर्टिकल टॉक्स अबाउट द इलेक्टोरल प्रोसेस वेर द कॉइलेशन ऑफ नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस पार्टी एंड द कांग्रेस पार्टी दे हैव वॉन द मोस्ट ऑफ द सीट्स इन दिस डेवलपमेंटल काउंसिल बट द इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ह्योर इज दिस अटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक काउंसिल दिस ए डी सी इज दे आर इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव सो लेट मी गिव यू गाइज बैकग्राउंड इन्फॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग दिस अटोनोमस डिस्ट्रिक काउंसिल in our country we have total 10 adcs and most of these are located in the northern eastern north eastern part of our country and we have seen uh, uh, two autonomous uh, district council in the ladakh region as well once sir ladakh has become a union territory these district council gain that prominence in that region see the primary objective of these uh, developmental council is to uh, mainly manage the administrative related works in that region and the same thing even this particular autonom- autonomous district council also does the same thing it administers the lay district of the ladakh and this has been established in 1995 under the act of ladakh autonomous hill developmental council act and uh, see every adc it has certain number of seats that are either elected or nominated usually there will be five or six seats uh, they are uh, nominated by government and rest of the seats are elected through the electoral processes and here also 30 seats uh, they went, went in for a uh, electoral process and uh, four councillors they are nominated by the government and they mainly handle the administrative related works and uh, uh, activities like developmental project health care infrastructure education land use taxation local governance all these aspects will be handled uh, with the help of this administrative council in uh, consultation with village panchayat so these aspects you have to remember with respect, with respect to autonomous district council let's move to the uh, second one the next article is regarding foreign portfolio investment in the newspaper it has been mentioned that uh, india has re- received 8000 crores worth of uh, foreign portfolio investment in our country see the basic understanding between fpi and fdi is important from exam perspective fpi usually the investment both of them are investment only uh, both of them came from the foreigners uh, foreign investment see in fbi usually investment is made on stocks share market but in fdi investment is made on companies through the infra- infrastructural projects or uh, owning the assets so fdi gives more power to the investor especially the handling of administrative related work day to day activities he can have a say with it but fpi since it invests only on the shares and security perspective money can be taken out any time the investor wants and fpi has a uh, direct influence on the uh, world economy if world economy is very strong you see the uh, more uh, investment in the emerging economies if there are some disturbance in the world economy especially in the west an economy you see uh, this foreign portfolio investment going out of the countries as soon as possible so this is considered as a hot money uh, fpi is considered as a hot money as i told you pre- uh, before it does not provide uh, uh, investor any direct ownership of any financial assets of the company and uh, is relatively liquid see it can go out any at any point of time so it is relatively liquid especially depend on the volatility of market if market is uh, losing if market is in red if this is a, a threat factor for this fpi in- investment if the sensex uh, points are high if nifty is uh, in green and it, it is going uh, in a upper trajectory then uh, those countries those economies can expect more fpi that is foreign portfolio investment so there is a direct link between volatility of market and the investment and as i told you fbi usually include in uh, stocks bond mutual fund exchange traded fund etfs and it is considered as a hot money so ultimately fpi are more liquid volatile and they are riskier than fdi but there are benefits to this fpi also see if fdi has their own benefit fdi fpi has their own benefit fdi usually helps investment establishment of companies um, manufacturing setup all these things are going to be helped by fdi but at the same time fbi has its own role to play in our economy see it is an accessibility to international credit if the fpi is coming into india it means that it, money is entering to the india in turn it is going to help indian companies and it also increases the liquidity of liquidity of the domestic capital market 
markets and also it promotes the development of equity market especially stock markets and there are issues the negative aspects are volatile as i told you this is considered as a hot money and economic disruption see if a enemy country it can economically manipulate another country with the fpi also so fpi is also considered as the economic disruptor it is not if it is not man handled manipulated proper well and there there could be a, could be a manipulation of trade and uh, investment process in the stock market let's see the previous year question with respect to this topic the question is with reference to fdi foreign direct investment in in india which one of the following is considered its major characteristic the first option is it is a investment through capital instrument essentially in a listed company second is it is a largely non debt creating capital flow see both tar F fpi and fdi they are capital flow but here it is non debt creating it means that uh, companies the investor is uh, investing in a company whereas um, fpi it is investing in stocks it is fpi is debt creating capital flow fdi is non debt cap uh, creating capital flow and the third option is it is investment which involves debt servicing as i told you no it is a uh, wrong option and the fourth one is it is a investment made by foreign institutional investors in a government security whether it is security or listed company this all related to the stock markets only so only option is the option b it is largely a non debt creating capital flow the next news is regarding isro see the in this news it talks about aditya l1 also but we have covered this topic in the last week current affairs also and covering the same topic again and again it does not make sense so let us stick on to the things which are important from exam perspective see let us focus on isro rather than aditya l1 let me give you guys background information regarding isro and it is important from exam perspective for both and uh, prelims and mains see usually isro e works under the department of science and department of science directly comes under prime minister and antrix antrix it is a commercial arm of isro these are the main important aspects you need to remember but uh, let me give you guys a brief introduction regarding this isro is a space agency it comes as i told you department of science and that that, that directly works under the control of uh, prime minister headquarters is in bangalore and uh, it objective is to work for the national development and uh, antrix as a marketing arm of isro and initially is see isro was uh, officially established in 18 uh, 1969 but the thing is way before 1969 it was existed in the form of incospar uh, under the department of atomic energy but in 1969 when indira gandhi she was a prime minister she established a new department altogether for a space mission and that was named as a isro from 1969 and the first indian space craft it was aryabhata it was launched in 1970s uh, most i think 1975 may, most probably this was considered as a very uh, great achievement at that point of time at the see this satellite was launched with the help of uh, russia's uh, launcher vehicle but later uh, after few years we have developed our own la launching vehicle that is a uh, satellite la launch vehicle 3 first two were not a successful one so satellite launch vehicle 3 was a successful launch vehicle that has been uh, developed by india and in eight, na, eight, 1980s we established uh, we launched another satellites uh, those are remote sensing satellites and bhaskara bhaskara 1 bhaskara 2 uh, they changed the entire uh, direction of our uh, space missions especially with respect to remote sensing see there are two aspects you have to remember one thing is remote sensing another thing is communication satellite see remote sensing usually it helps in uh, weather forecasting or it uh, imaging and earth imaging in a simple way if i have to tell you what exactly remote sensing consider satellite as a camera it uh, make sure that what is happening in the region whatever we want to uh, analyze or whether it from a uh, weather phenomena or a intelligence uh, a gathering phenomena so remote sensing usually it it is it can be it can be said in a simple terms as a satellite camera it makes sure that what is going on in the region it collects all the data Communic on the other hand communication satellites these satellites it 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 is very important for the communication broadcasting tv media for all these things communication satellite are very important the uh, the broadband connection cellular connection tv all these for all these things so after 1990s we were very successful in both the fields even in remote sa sensing satellite we have launched a lot of uh, satellites and they were all successful and even from the communication uh, satellite uh, perspective also we we had a very f successful launch of especially insat uh here it has been mentioned in sat uh, these series of uh, satellites they were successfully launched and it helped india's uh, communication sector and also the third as aspect is launch vehicles also even from the launch vehicle perspective the pslv and uh, gslv 
we were successful from all these perspective also now we are going for a mark 3 uh, launch vehicle so from all the perspective uh, from the remote sensing communication satellite launch vehicle and from the commercial aspect also now we are launching satellites of other countries also so it shows that on the whole isro has grown extremely strong and it is contributing for the national development also it helps in national security also economic perspective social perspective and the security perspective from all these perspective isro is extremely important it is playing a significant role for the nation's development let's see the previous year question with respect to isro the question is isro's role has been impeccable in making india a global space power however there are many challenges and opportunity in the new space age that isro needs to address that is the question let's move to the next one the next news is regarding asiatic wild dog and in this article it has been mentioned that these are facing a risk of extinction so it is our responsibility to make sure that whatever the step it is possible we should make sure that their population is not going to be reduced so how do we work in that direction there are two options i have given here uh, two suggestions have been given one thing is prey availability is extremely important another thing is habitat uh, suitability these two are very important thing to make sure that uh, uh, these are not affect their lives are, are not affected but another aspect has been discussed here in this article especially the tiger uh, related aspect see we have a project tiger the tiger conservation aspect and we are primarily focusing on their conservation we are pro focusing on the to improve the number numbers of tigers so whatever the steps we are taking for the tiger conservation that is impacting on uh, asiatic dog numbers also the steps taken for the prey availability for tigers that is helping for uh, asiatic dog uh, population also and even the habitat suitability the steps taken to make sure the safety of tiger it is helping this also see these kind of overlapping activities has a very positive effect on other species as well and especially here it is affecting positively on a asiatic wild dog this is a news that has been mentioned in the article but let me give you guys background information regarding asiatic dog it is important from exam perspective see usually these asiatic wild dog they are located uh, from the russia to uh, south asian region even southeast asian region including all these regions but now it is very much restricted to south and uh, southeast asian region and a few uh, locations of china and especially if you look at in india the north except northwestern region these are located in almost all the parts even it is located in the uh, southern region the northeastern region and central highlands it is located in all the uh, areas except the northwestern region the rajasthan and the gujarat region these are also called as uh, indian wild dog red dog whistling dog mountain wolf and this this is one among the pre apex predator in the forest ecosystem these apex predator are extremely important to maintain that balance in the forest ecosystem and under iucn it has been uh, uh, mentioned as an endangered uh, species and uh, under site it is an it comes under appendix second and under wildlife protection act of 1972 it is listed in the schedule 2 let's see the previous year question with respect to this topic question is which one on which one of the following groups of animals belong to category of endangered species see all the four options are here you can pause and you can go through with all the option the option is one that is great indian bustard musk deer red panda and asiatic wild ass these are the four uh, species that belong to endangered species category let's move to the next topic the next topic is regarding appointment of judges in this article it has been mentioned that uh, judiciary is not happy with the government behavior see through collagium uh, the judiciary sends some of the names of our uh, point of some names of uh, judges who are eligible to become uh, as a judges of supreme court or the high court and even the transfer uh, process is also happen through the collegium process but here what it is doing is that the names have been sent by the judiciary but the government is not taking any action it is re rejecting most of the names that has been sent through the collegium so judiciary is not uh, happy with and it is telling that because of the uh, no action by the government it is delaying the uh, judicial judge selection process so government has to take proper steps in the di direction it has to make sure that there will not be any delay and whatever the names that has been suggested by uh, the judiciary government should make sure that without any valid reason it should not uh, reject the representation or the name that has been sent by the uh, supreme court uh, collegium let's see the various aspects of uh, appointment of judges the first thing is under the appointment that is a qualification of judges uh, that has been mentioned in the article 123 see he should be a citizen of india that is a basic thing another thing is uh, that person 
should served as a judge of high court at least for the five years he must have served in high court as a judge for five years and he, or else this is the one of the conditions another condition is he he must have been an advocate in high court for at least 10 years and the third aspect is see they he uh, the president can also appoint a person as a judge if he has a if he is considered as a distinct, distinguished jurist in the opinion of president see this aspect is only for the supreme court judges you can this aspect is not there for the high court judges so this distinction you should be aware of and uh, see the judges of supreme court even the collegium sends name it will be uh, these judges will be appointed by president only this also comes under the article of 123 and how these judges are removed uh, usually they are removed through the impeachment process and he can be removed only by an order of president and impeachment process it means that uh, this uh, resolution has to be passed by both the houses with two-third majority especially the two-third of the members present and voting if that has been passed in a parliament then it go to president and president gives his assent to the uh, impeachment process and finally the judge will be impeached uh, he, he he is going to uh, lose the power and the grounds to remove the uh, particular judge is uh, misbehavior and incapacity and let's talk about collegium system also see co this collegium uh, this uh, terminology or the process it has not mentioned in constitution this thing you have to remember usually collegium decides appointment uh, promotions and transfer of uh, judges and right now we are uh, following a system where chief justice along with four senior most judges of supreme court they are considered as collegium and whatever the decision with respect to judiciary they usually take it especially with respect to appointment and here in this article it talks about appointment usually this collegium this groups uh, request it sends name to the president and president has to select the names out of the uh, recommendation but president is not taking action and it is re rejecting most of the name and this is where judiciary is not happy with uh, let's talk about the uh, collegium process also there are three judge cases that are important from exam perspective and uh, this shows the evolution of collegium system in our country the first judge case it uh, happened in 1981 under this case the whatever the cgi recommendation is that is considered as ultimate cgi is used to send names to the president so cgi has a, a chief justice of india he had a complete control over appointment transfers of the promotion and in the second ju judgment judges case in 1993 where it is not the cdi cji's individual opinion but also two other senior most judges from supreme court they also gave their recommendation along with the chief justice of india and later on it has been reformed further in 1998 where it is called as a three judges case and under this case this collegium has extended as a five member body there will be cji along with that there will be four more judges from a supreme court and these uh, cumulatively these five members they send recommendation to the president and president selects the judges president uh, transfers the judges or gives promotion with respect to the recommendation given by this collegium let's see the previous year question in this perspective see this question was asked in 2007 at that point of time this this was a news national judicial appointment commission act of 2004 it was a news uh, that's the reason it has come in the uh, examination also let's see the question critically examining the supreme court's judgment on national judicial appointment commission act of 2014 uh, with reference to appointment of judges of higher judiciary in india let's move to the next topic the next article is regarding uh, nobel prize the Nobel Prize 2023 in Economics, it is uh, it has given to Claudia Goldin. She did research with respect to role of women in uh, uh, labor market. Uh, her studies have shown a vivid perspective regarding why women are facing difficulties in labor market. All these perspectives have been extremely uh, uh, well written and well uh, analyzed uh, in her writings. She talks about gender gauge, uh, gap that is a wage gap between men and women and she talked about uh, U-shaped developmental uh, prospectors. See U-shaped um, especially with respect to women role in labor market. What exactly this symbolizes? Initially if the country is underdeveloped there will be more participation of women in the labor market and especially agriculture related aspect so high labor participation will be there in underdeveloped economies as the country becomes industrialized as the country becomes more uh, 
developed and it becomes more financially strong then the women participation in the labor market it reduces so this is this this section re represent that aspect so again if a country becomes advanced economy if a country becomes economically stronger then women gets education and they gets the graduation and higher education also and again they enter the labor market with skills and again here their participation is going to be increased this study this theory is given by claudia goldin and another aspect she also talks about contraceptive pills these contraceptive pills played very important role especially american labor market uh, see these contraceptive pill they acted as a choice for women actually after introduction uh, introduction of these contraceptive pills in american market the marrying age for women has increased and even career choices also have been increased so what it shows is if a woman has choice if women have choice definitely it is going to help positive way they can take their own decision see these are three aspects predominantly she talks about in her research and she has been awarded for this study and she almost for 30 years of data she collected it and she did a study over historical analysis also for almost 100 years uh, the analysis of how exactly the labor market has emerged in usa has been extremely very well documented by this author for her contribution she has been awarded with a nobel prize uh, she was a ha harvard professor understanding of uh, gender gap in a labor market as i told you and the pay gap the wage gap between the men and women and and another aspect is even in advanced economy higher income countries also there is a wage gap this is also a matter of concern that is what she talks about here and the role played by marriage parenthood concentrate contraceptive pills especially in women's career that study also gives us a new direction with respect to women role in the labor market Nobel Prize they were started in 1901 especially from uh, Sweden and it was started by it was started in the name of Alfred Nobel and uh, he has given the economic contributions also and this Alfred Nobel he invited the dynamites and other uh, high explosives originally the Nobel award it was given to the in the field of physics chemistry uh, physiology and medicine literature piece and Economics was not in the list and 1969 the sixth prize the economic field of economic science is also added and officially the economic uh, Nobel Prize it is not considered as a Nobel Prize that that distinction you have to remember and usually these prizes are given to the individual and especially the Peace Prize if you look at it it, it is a comfort to institutions also the Food and Agriculture Organization WHO they have also got the Peace Prize Nobel Peace Prize and however the only three individual can share the prize. Uh, if it is uh, awarded in the perspective i mean to say that if a prize is awarded in the field of physics chemistry physiology literature and peace where all these yes even uh, three persons can share a prize but when it comes to peace prize it can be awarded to the institution also usually peace prizes are given to the single individual or single institution uh, but if it comes to physics and chemistry usually if there is an experiment if this year we got uh, it has been given to the mrx uh, mrna vaccine see the contribution to this vaccine is given by uh, two or three members so the award will be distributed between two or two or three personalities and peace prize usually are given to a single person yeah, for the single institution let's see the previous year question with respect to this article uh, this is an old question in 2008 this was asked the nobel uh, prize winning scientist james d watson uh, is known for his work in which area there are four options have been given here metallurgy meteorology meteorology uh, environmental protection and genetics option is d genetics let's move to the next topic the next article is regarding asian games asian games has come to end and the medal tally has been mentioned here india has won around 107 medals and the asian games it held in hongzhou in uh, uh, china and last year the asia in the last time the asian games held it is it held in indonesia in jakarta at that time india has uh, uh, achieved the mark of uh, 70 medals at that time now having 107 medals it showed the uh, growth in indian uh, sports sector and out of which 28 are gold medals and let me give you guys brief introduction regarding uh, asian games also see this is a big this is considered as a biggest sport uh, competition in asia it is also considered as a uh, olympics of asia this is usually organized by olympic council of asia and uh, the first asian games was held in uh, new delhi in 1951 usually uh, in 1950s only most of the countries in uh, asian region they got independence uh, by the european uh, uh, colonizers so after that uh, to have that uh, collaborative uh, 
relationship with all these countries even the sports activity has been considered so that we can establish that friendly relationship with other countries uh, from that uh, every four years four year once we are having asian games in the region india has hosted uh, hosted twice this asian games once in the first asian games in 1951 uh, and the ninth asian games in 1982 let's see the previous year questions with respect to this uh, sports topic the three statements have been given consider the following statement in respect of laurels world sports award which was instituted in the year 2000 the first statement is american golfer tiger woods was the first winner of the award and the second statement is the award was re received mostly by formula 1 players so far and the third is uh, roger federer received this award maximum number of times compared to others uh, which of the above statements are correct and the option is c that is 1 and 3 see even sports related questions are increasing these days in uh, preliminary examination so it is necessary to focus on sports sports aspect also let's move to the next topic the next news is regarding telemanus and it has been uh, mentioned in the article that uh, the people who call for the telemanus in initiative most of them are between 18 to 45 age group this is not important from exam perspective but telemanus is important from exam perspective let me give you guys background information regarding this particular scheme see telemanus it is a uh, initiative by the central government with respect to mental health see there will be a, a free telehealth mental services it has given by the uh, uh, central government and this service is available in all the languages of our officially ex uh, uh, recognized languages in our country a person who is facing some uh, mental issues uh, he can call to the this uh, helpline and he can talk to the counselors there and they give uh, tele services with respect to mental health uh, related issues the main objective is to promote the mental wealth being across all the age, age groups and the full form of uh, manas it, uh, the manas stands for mental health normalcy and augmentation system and it uh, it is implemented by Uni uh, union minister of health and family welfare another aspect is the services are available in 24/7 uh, in almost all the major indian languages let's see the previous year question with respect to government scheme and there was a initiative atal innovation mission and the question was this mission is set up under which of the ministry or which department it is there are four options it has been mentioned department of science and technology ministry of employment niti ayog and ministry of skill and development the option here is c niti ayog it is a initiative taken by the niti ayog The next article is regarding scheduled areas. Uh, in the newspaper, there was an article regarding the Indian scheduled areas. See, uh, the scheduled areas are important from exam perspective. There are two aspects you need to remember here. Scheduled areas, especially deal. There are two schedules in the constitution that deals with uh, tribal scheduled and tribal areas. Fifth schedule and the sixth schedule. The fifth, uh, the sixth schedule, it talks about scheduled area in four states in the north east, north eastern uh, part of our India. and the fifth uh, schedule it talks about scheduled areas in 10 state in other than this northeastern of this four state that has been mentioned in the six state and also another article you need to remember is article 244 this also talks about scheduled areas in our country these three aspects you need to remember fifth schedule and the sixth schedule both of them talk about, talk about say, scheduled in area c area only uh, but Six schedule is restricted to only north eastern state and that to only four states there. Rest of the areas that is called as S C S T area will be handled under fifth schedule. And also Article two forty four that is important from exam perspective, which deals with the uh, schedule tribe and schedule uh, uh, cast areas. As I told you, the fifth schedule it talks about administration, administration and control of certain areas called scheduled and uh, tribal areas, especially in ten Indian states. The name of the ten Indian states have been mentioned here. And another aspect, the scheduled areas in Mizoram, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Assam. These are excluded from fifth schedule because these four states comes under sixth schedule. Let's see what are the criteria uh, to declare a region as a scheduled area. The four criteria have been mentioned in constitution. The first thing is economic backwardness of the uh, of the region, and the second thing is a viable entity should be there. Like uh, geographical area should also be in favor of uh, declaring area as a scheduled area. If a area is distributed among vast geographical area, then you cannot declare entire area as a scheduled area. It will be difficult. So a viable entity for administration, like a block, taluk, or district. if this situation arises then it would be easier for government to declare 
to look after this area and declare as a scheduled area and the third reason is there should be reasonable size and compactness the area should be reasonable size and compact compactness if the area is like two three villages uh, or like a small hobbly kind of thing then it won't make any sense to declare entire area as a scheduled area area should have a reasonable geographical size and also a compactness it means that it should be together there should not be disturbed or uh, uh, distributed areas and the uh, a presence of tribal population which is also extremely important this also mattered matter a lot to declare area as a scheduled area and who is going to declare uh, make a declaration of uh, any area as a scheduled area it is a president he can declare any area as a scheduled area and also if president want to increase or de decrease the boundary or the area of a scheduled uh, region then he has to go in consultation with governor let's see the previous year question with respect to this uh, topic if a particular area is brought under the fifth schedule of constitution of india which one of the following statement best reflect the consequences of it the four statements have been given the first statement is this would prevent the transfer of land of tribal to non-tribal land second is this would create a local self-governing body in that area third one is this would convert the area into a union territory option d is state having such areas would declare a special category state see all the three options are uh, wrong only option a is right this is the correct answer let's move to the next topic the next news is regarding Indian Ocean Rim Association and here the news is Sri Lanka is going to uh, take the chairmanship of this association. You can see this here, it may not be very much visible but those countries which are bordering Indian Ocean are mainly uh, comes under this uh, organization, this cooperative organization. The main objective of all this association and grouping is for regional cooperation and sustainable development and especially uh, in the region of Indian Ocean. It mainly has 22 members. All these members are bordering uh, Indian Ocean and also it has 9 dialogue partners and it was formed in 1997 and its uh, secretariat is in Mauritius and uh, you can go through with the countries here. Australia, Bang from Australia to almost African countries, you can see Mozambique, Australia, Bangladesh, Comoros, Indonesia, Iran, Kenya, all these countries come under this association and it has a representative from uh, three level. One is at government level, public level and business level and academia, the academia, even the students and the education institution to promote the cooperation between the countries in the organization. And the Indian Ocean uh, Rim Association, it has six priority areas, um, maritime security. Actually, actually, this is the most important uh, uh, aim or objective with respect to this association. Maritime security is a priority. Trade and investment facilitation, fisheries management, disaster risk reduction, academic and scientific cooperation, and finally, tourism promotion and cultural exchanges. Uh, let's see the previous year question uh, in this topic. The question is uh, with reference to uh, Indian Ocean Rim Association for Regional Cooperation. I consider the following statement. Two statements have been given. The, the first statement is uh, it, it was established very recently in response in response to the incidents of piracy and accidents of uh, oil spills. This is the first statement. Second statement is it is an alliance made for maritime security only. Option is D. Uh, neither one or two it is not very recent it was uh, constituted in 1997 it is not only for maritime security there are six uh, priority areas comes under this association let's move to the next topic in the next news the president of tanzania is visiting india see this news is not important but the location of tanzania is important from ge geography perspective see so let me show you guys in the map here you can see the location of tanzania on african map and let's see in detail the neighboring countries of Tanzania, uh, Kenya in the north and Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Zambia, Malawi and the Mozambique. These are the neighboring countries of Tanzania and three important water bodies are also important that is the Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika and uh, Lake Malawi. This is the geographical aspect of Tanzania. Also, uh, Prime Minister Modi told that Tanzania, India considered Tanzania as a valued partner in Indo-Pacific relationship. Let's see the previous year question from this topic. Question is, which one of the following lakes of Western Africa has become dry and turned into a desert? Option A, Lake Victoria. Option B, uh, Fagubain. Option 3, Oguta. Option D, Volta. Option B is the correct answer. This is the right one. The next news is regarding enforcement directorate. The news is that ED has taken position of uh, D Raja, sorry, uh, A Raja's uh, properties, uh, Tamil Nadu minister. But the thing is, this news is not important. But ED, 
NIA and uh, these kind of CBI, these institutions are coming new, coming in news again and again. So, from the exam perspective, at least you should be have an idea of what exactly the uh, working uh, area and priorities of uh, these kind of institution. So, let me let me give the revision regarding this particular topic. See the main objective of ED that deals with money laundering and violation of foreign exchange laws and it works under the Department of uh, Revenue which comes under the Ministry of Finance. In 1956 it was constituted and it was named as Enforcement Unit and later after one year it has become Enforcement Directorate in 1957. The When it was constituted in 1956 it was dealing with Foreign Exchange Regulation Act that is fair of 1947 but later on money laundering and other aspects have also been added into the ED. Uh, discuss how emerging technologies and globalization contribute to money laundering elaborate the measures to tackle problem of money land laundering both at national and international level let's move to the next one the next news is regarding electoral bond uh, see uh, the file has been the case has been filed in supreme court regarding electoral bond especially regarding anonymity of these bonds uh, let me tell you what exactly the issue that is going on in supreme court see when you buy an electoral bond from a bank your name is not going to be mentioned then you can donate this bond to any political party and this is where the issue has been uh, under the debate and this issue has also gone to the court the case has been filed telling that see the name is usually not mentioned mentioned in these electoral bonds and this goes against the right to information uh, uh, provision with respect to political parties see i am by if, if for take for an example if i am by, buying an electoral bond my name is not mentioned in the electoral bond and if anybody want to get the information regarding where these political parties are getting funding nobody able to get the information because whatever the fund received by this political party there will not be mentioned of they there will not be any names mentioned in the uh, donors column so the matter of concern here is through this anonymous funding is going to happen to the political parties and this goes against the ethos of democracy we should be aware of from where these political parties are getting funding by this methodology political parties in our country they can easily hide the information from where funding is coming and in court uh, the case has been filed against the violation of article 19 article 14 and article 21 of our constitution uh, this is the news that has been mentioned in the uh, newspaper but the thing is even the information background information regarding electoral bond is also important let me tell you guys what exactly the various provisions of electoral bond see electoral bond as i as i told you uh, as a citizen or a corporate company they can buy this bond and they can give it as a donation to these political parties and bond can be issued 1000 rupees 10000 1 lakh 10 lakh or even up to the 1 crore without any maximum limit you can buy any number of bonds and there is only one bank that is authorized to issue this bond that is state bank of india and once you buy the these bonds then they are valid for 15 days only within 15 days if you don't hand it over to a political party then this amount will go back to the bank only another provision here is see you cannot buy these uh, electoral bonds throughout the year you can buy only at very specific uh, period of time usually uh, 10 days in 4 months of time especially january you can buy for 10 days in january you can buy for 10 days in april july and october only in that period of time you can buy and you have to submit to those political parties offices within 15 days either online is also possible or offline also you can submit to the political party uh, hand, you can hand it over the political party parties and a, a, a person as an individual level he can buy the bonds or collaboratively or jointly also with other individuals a person can a two or three person also can uh, buy the bonds and they can donate to the political parties as i told you do donor's name is not going to be mentioned in the bond and this is the uh, matter of concern matter of debate and th for this reason it has been filed uh, case has been filed in a court of law let's see the uh, main question with respect to this topic the question is argue whether electoral bonds are an effective mechanism to conduct fair and transparent elections suggest some measures to improve transparency in electoral funding to political parties let's move to the next one the next topic is imf uh, in the news article it has been mentioned that imf has predicted india's gdp growth it will be around 6.3 uh, percent for the financial year uh, 2024 this is the news but the background information regarding imf is important from exam per perspective both from prelims and mains perspective as well as other examination like bank exams ssc state exams from all perspective world bank imf who these are extremely important uh, so let let me give you guys a brief introduction regarding this see imf it was constituted in 1994 as a result of britain 
Bretton Woods Conference. Bretton Woods Conference gave rise to two financial institution. One is World Bank, another one is IMF. Since it has been, we are discussing on IMF only. Let us stick on to IMF only provisions of IMF and various other aspects of IMF. The headquarters is in Washington D.C. And see, this IMF it acts as a last lender for the countries, especially for countries are facing severe balance of payment crisis. Then IMF is the one which helps those countries to tackle these issues. And IMF is also one among the specialized agencies of UN United Nations Organization. And there are four concepts you need to remember with respect to IMF. The first one is IMF bailout. If a country is facing extreme financial insecurity and a threat of bankruptcy then imf bailout this is the under this the uh, country is going to get the financial support and the second object second concept is sdr that is special drawing rights see if a country is getting money from imf then it is going to uh, get uh, the country is going to receive money through special drawing rights special drawing rights is it is uh, usually it is a international reserve and it is a basket of five currency usually the uh, five currencies includes a us dollar euro chinese yuan chinese yuan has been added very recently japanese yen and british british pound special drawing rights are a international reserve it is a reserve of a uh, currencies of five different countries and from this international reserve the countries receive money this is the concept of SDR and other two concepts are also important. This was also asked in examination, the rapid financing instrument and rapid credit facility. See both these uh, concepts, it is a lending facility of IMM, IMF which provides rapid financial assistance. See a country is in uh, dire need of uh, uh, money, it's very urgent, very, uh, country is in need of financial assistance in a very urgent manner. Under this uh, circumstances, the financial assistance or the financial support given by your the IMF that will come under rapid financing financing instrument. The another aspect is rapid credit facility. Here also credit will be given, loan will be given to the countries which are facing severe financial crisis, severe balance of payment crisis. Uh, but rapid credit facility is given only to the low income countries. This rapid financing instrument, the first concept, it was given to any entity. Even the advanced economies can also take money under rapid financing instrument. But rapid credit facility, this under this only low income countries are eligible to take urgent loan uh, for the balance of, balance of payment crisis. Uh, let's see the relationship between India and IMF. India is one among the founder member of IMF. Uh, India took uh, the financial assistance from IMF, IMF since 1992. Uh, after that, we uh, went for liberal, liberalization, globalization and privatization. After 1993, we never take uh, the financial assistance from IMF. And right now, India's uh, quota in IMF in a uh, special drawing rate, it is 2.44%. And we are going to see the reformations in quota reformations in IMF. Uh, once the reformation happens, then it, India's quota is going to rise to 2.75%. Let's see the previous year question paper. This question, uh, uh, this question was asked in 2022. A rapid financing instrument, rapid credit facility are related to provisions of lending by which one of the following options are first one is Asian Development Bank, second one is International Monetary Fund, third one is uh, UNEP, uh, sorry, United, United Nations Environment Program Financing Initiative, fourth one is World Bank. As we just uh, discussed below, it is uh, discussed above, it is International Monetary Fund. Uh, let's move to the next topic. That's Gaganyan. The next topic is uh, Gaganya. Gaganyaan is the first human space flight from ISRO and this is extremely important. We have uh, first time we are conducting human space flight mission. Uh, what happens in Gaganyaan is Gaganyaan it is going to encircle, it is going to rotate around the earth in the lower earth orbit around 300 to 400 kilometers and uh, the astronauts they are going to be in uh, uh, space for 5 to 7 days. And here in this news, it, it talks about crew module and what exactly this crew module is. I just told you that five to seven days, these astronauts, uh, they are going to be in space under the low in lower, lower Earth orbit in the Gaganyaan mission. And these uh, uh, astronauts are going to be housed in crew module. They are going to be in, inside the crew module. And since they have to come back again, the 
working ability of crew model and testing is extremely important and this crew model testing is going to be conducted by isro very soon and it, here it has been mentioned that the first test flight it is going to be scheduled on october 20 21st the date and all is not important but all you have to remember is gaganyaan is it is a first human uh, space flight mission and how many days they, they are astronauts are going to be in space around five to seven days and they are going to uh, go for a lower earth orbit they are going to be in low or lower earth orbit and uh, the another aspect you need to remember is crew model and this is where uh, these astronauts are going to stay are going to be housed so testing this crew model is important and this is what going to happen and this test involve uh, it usually involve launching of this crew model to the outer space and then it is necessary to bring it back on the earth also so both the aspects have to be tested properly the testing uh, it is going on from almost year from uh, two three years continuously work is going on on the crew module and we are seeing in newspaper again and again with respect to crew module so remember this aspect of uh, crew module and you can see it uh, the procedure of how exactly it is going to happen the crew module it is going it is going to be there it is going to be uh, there in space for five to uh, seven seven days i think it's not that much visible here and then it is going to be back and it is going to be a land on a ocean and under this uh, gaganyaan mission there will be three flights the first two flights will be unmanned and the last one will be the human uh, space flight uh, let's see the questions or uh, previous year question on this topic uh, there was a question on mangalyaan and this question was asked in 2016 see the topic it, it may be different this is gaganyaan and this is mangalyaan but what i am trying to say is if you get to know on what lines these question have been asked so on the same lines you can prepare for the examination also the there are three statements have been given the first statement is it is also called mars orbiter mission and the second statement is made in india made india the second country to have spacecraft orbit around the uh, orbit the mass after usa this is the second statement and the third statement is made india the only country to be successful in making its spacecraft orbit the mass in its very first attempt these are three, three statement the correct answer is three, uh, three only first and third statement is correct second statement is wrong india is not the second country i think it is the th fourth or fifth country to have a spacefit orbit a uh, spacecraft uh, orbit around the mass the next news is prompt corrective action see before getting into this prompt corrective action let me give you the difference between nbfc and bank here see here in this news is the state owned nbfcs are also come under pca that is prompt corrective action see let us understand what exactly nbfc and what is the difference between bank usually nbfc as a simple thing as a uh, entities which give loans uh, they nbfcs include in general if i have to say this muthoot finance manapuram gold loans these kind of entities they can be considered as nbfcs and even in nbfcs there are two types one is private nbmc and government owned public owned nbnc nbfcs and here the public nbfcs non banking financial corporations financial companies these have come under uh, prompt corrective action see uh, these uh, nbfcs they gives a banking service they don't have to have a banking license banking license means usually you, there are so many restrictions that you need to have a 100 crore corpus these kind of restrictions are there for nbfc they don't have to follow all the extreme uh, uh, strict formulations what a bank need to establish so there is a, a little leniency when it comes to uh, establishing nbfc but if a bank is has to be established it is a a uh, proper license has to be taken and the uh, banking uh, rules and regulation it has to follow and it has it will come under the control of rbi and another thing is nbfcs it uh, uh, these are regulated under companies act of 1956 and it has been amended in 2013 uh, but banking activities the banks usually they are regulated by banking regulation act of 1949 demand de demand dds demand deposit it is not accepted in nbfcs in bank it is accepted now uh, foreign investment almost uh, 100% foreign investment is uh, allowed in nbfcs but in banking sector only in private sector it is uh, up to 74% of uh, foreign investment is allowed and uh, we cannot consider nbfcs as a part of a payment uh, payment and settlement system uh, but bank they are in integral part of payment settlement system let's see what exactly the news is
uh, see rbi it has informed it has uh, released a new regulation that the state owned nbfcs the non banking financial companies they are going to come under pca that is prompt corrective action from october 2024 this is the news and which are all uh, state uh, owned nbfc it includes a pfa uh, pfc that is a uh, uh, power financial corporation rec that is rural electrification corporation irfc ifci these are the government owned state owned non banking financial companies and these rules are only for state owned non banking uh, financial companies not for the private uh, nbfcs and what exactly pca that prompt corrective action is see if a bank or a financial institution if they are facing some financial insecurities if they are not following financial discipline then rbi is going to put pca on that particular bank see that uh, let's uh, take an example if some bank enara bank its uh, profit is getting reduced and if uh, operation working uh, ability and operation output is reducing over the years then uh, rbi thinks that the financial health of enara bank is not good then it is time now that we have to take proper direct proper steps to make sure that this bank is not going to collapse to make sure it is going to recovery from all these financial mishandling to uh, make it happen they give some of the rules and regulation to uh, banks to follow and those rules and regulations are uh, prompt corrective action corrective action means you want to correct something which is not right and what are these corrective action these corrective actions to make the financial health of the financial institution stable and this was institu uh, in introduced in 2002 as i told you it it is implemented on the uh, financial institutions or the banks where they breach the certain financial threshold and uh, the other objective is to increase the financial health of the bank as i told you that is the main objective if they are facing extreme losses or if the financial stability is not good to make sure that it is financial health of the bank is good this uh, pca is going to be implemented and how exactly they uh, implement this the main objective objective uh, is uh, to increase the financial health and how do you do it if there are unwanted spending by the bank if they are going for uh, high risk lending in the sense that there are they are giving loans to those companies which are not financially strong and if they are loan giving loans and they are lending to those people who don't have a strong uh, payback ability so these kind of high risk lending is going to be uh, restricted and even uh, the money uh, for unwanted expenses like uh, management uh, the expansion of management salary see banking system it is already this particular bank is already in financial insecurity on top of it you are spending you are over uh, uh, emphasizing for all this cosmetic activity it is not required so if bank is going or going through with all these aspects then uh, pca is going to put a uh, restriction on all these aspects let's see what exactly what uh, the what are the corrective actions that will be prescribed by rbi there are few things i have been mentioned here see uh, it put res restriction on dividend distribution distribution to especially the clients who have who are uh, who are having the share of that particular banking and it put restrictions on issue of guarantees on uh, behalf of crew uh, again this is also going to be restricted and the for the ban branch expansion also restrictions on branch expansion also the bank itself is facing the financial crunch and what is the point of uh, going for a ban branch expansion it does not make sense as long as your financial uh, stability is not uh, good uh, you have to halt all these uh, objectives of branch expansion or uh, uh, dividend distribution so these are the restrictions are, are going to be placed uh, Uh, on bank and there will be restriction on capital expenditure and only this capital expenditure will be only on those items which are extremely necessary not on unnecessary items and even there will be reduction on the operation cost also uh, let's see the previous year question with respect to prompt corrective action the question is consider the following statement about prompt corrective action there are two statement the first statement is it is meant to assess monitor control and take corrective actions on bank which are weak and troubled yes this is right the process or mechanism under which such actions are taken is known as prompt corrective action yes both the statements are correct answer is uh, c let's move to the next one 
The next news is regarding Operation Ajay. This is a rescue program. This is a rescue mission uh, to evacuate Indians from uh, Israel. See, it has been believed that around 18,000 Indian citizens are living in Israel and it is a duty of Indian government to make sure that their life and uh, property are safe and secure. Uh, since the commercial uh, flight handlings are uh, suspended between India and Israel, India, the government is taking a step and it has uh, started a rescue operation, Operation Ajay to evacuate Indians who are stuck in uh, Israel and uh, uh, this is the second evacuation this year and we had a operation kaveri and it brought it uh, brought back several thousands of indians from sudan also uh, there is a previous year question that has been mentioned here this is a case study of uh, ethics see it's a big case study uh, you can pause and you can go through with the uh, with this uh, question this question was asked in 2019 uh, case study ethics this case study mainly deals with rescue operation and uh, what are the steps you are going to take in these kind of situation that from that perspective this question has been asked so i'm uh, what i'm trying to say is you can you cannot ignore any concept a question might come from any perspective so make sure that you cover particular topic from 360 degree let's move to the next one the next news is regarding Willinium port. Uh, this is a simple news. I'll just uh, show you guys in the map where exactly this port is located. Here you can see in the southern tip of Kerala, Willinium. See, this port is in use uh, uh, continuously from so many months. Uh, agitation is going on in this area. The local fisher, the central government, it want to establish a, a port. Uh, it want to increase the capability of this particular port. But the localite, especially the local fishermen, they are against this uh, central government project. What they are telling is, if the this project comes here, it is going to affect the livelihood of the fishermen. It is going to affect the uh, fish stock in that particular region. So they are opposing the building of this particular port. See, ports are important, extremely important from building perspective, both a geographical aspect as well as a economic perspective also. From both aspects, you should be aware of the location and the importance of particular uh, a port and this particular one as i told you it is located in the southern tip of indian peninsula and it is just 10 nautical miles away uh, away from the major international uh, sea route see uh, this plays very important role this has this gives that connectivity factor for international uh, sea routes so uh, the success of this port is directly going to help the entire southern peninsula of india and it is not only uh, from the uh, trade aspect even this particular port it is going to correct uh, create thousands of employment opportunities also and other aspect also that this port is also going to help the minor ports in the kerala and other region especially the southern tamil nadu and kerala region this port is going to play an important role here so uh, whatever the issues are there with the local fisherman the government is ready to have talks it told that it is ready to have talks with people and if there are it, it is going to affect the livelihood of people and government is ready to uh, give an alternative uh, facility for all those people who are going to affected uh, by this project uh, this is what this news is this is a very small news but uh, from exam perspective ports are important let's see the previous year question with respect to this uh, topic and the question is the in india the ports are categorized as major and non-major ports which of the following is a non-major port question was asked in 2009 but this topic is important the other four options have been given our uh, question is which one is the non-major port and it means that minor port the uh, kochi the uh, paradip and the new mind and here the option b is the right option this is the non-major port the next news is regarding FCRA, that is Foreign Contribution Regulating Act. Some of the gen some of the journal journalists have been uh, arrested under FTR FCRA case. Let's see what exactly this FCRA. The news is only that CBI has registered FCRA case against a news 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 click. This is a website. This is the port news portal, and also uh, some of the journalists which are associated with various these kind of news portals. But let's see what exactly FCRA. FCRA is important from exam perspective. Uh, let's see the provisions also. See, FCRA as the name indicates, Foreign Contribution Leg Regulating Act. It regulates the foreign donation, especially the NGOs and the non-government uh, organization, uh, people association, civil society association. See, whatever the entities which are uh, receiving foreign donations, that comes under Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. And the main objective here is, see, usually foreign funds, uh, they if they come to NGO, many a times uh, government has found out that these funds are used for a uh, 
anti national activity so it was affecting internal security of the country so right now government is taking steps to make sure that whatever ngos or civil society organization which receives fund make sure that these funds are not misused not used for anti national activities so from the internal security perspective fcra has been implemented and first it was uh, enacted in 1976 during the indira gandhi uh, he was a, she was a prime minister at that time emergency was at uh, peak and it was amended in 2010 later this fcra it is implemented by uh, home ministry and uh, see it it is applicable to all association groups entities ngos companies whichever receiving the foreign donation and let's see the provisions of our act what exactly this particular act talks about if a entity if it want to receive a foreign donations then it has to be registered under act then only it can register without registering if an uh, uh, ngo is receiving the money then proper legal actions can be taken against that entity and also uh, if if the company or an ngo if it want if it want to receive a fund uh, under fcra then it has to open an account in sbi a delhi branch and this is mandatory funds have to come through this bank branch only and if a, a ngo is receiving a fund and uh, the usually purpose is also have usually purpose also mentioned with respect to receival of fund and these funds have to be used only for those purpose it has been received not for any other purpose and also another thing is every year these ngos they have to file the annual returns actually there was a news that around uh, uh, 5000 ngos they don't even uh, file the annual returns and government was very strict uh, for the implementation of this F fcr act because of this so many ngos have been closed down uh, this was also in the news continuously and uh, see one ngo it cannot transfer fund to another ngo these are the provisions of fcra let's see the previous year questions also with respect to fcra question is examine critically the recent changes in the rules of uh, governance foreign funding of ngo under fcra act of 1976 this question was asked in 2015 the next news is regarding medical termination of pregnancy act uh, the news here is the women went to a, a, a supreme court and she filed a case that she wanted to end her pregnancy she was having uh, she was at the 20 week uh, pregnancy and she wanted to abort it but here the matter is under the medical termination pregnancy act she can terminate up to 24 weeks and beyond that 24 weeks it is not uh, legal uh, especially under the Uh, legislation but now she is asking the court that she need permission to adopt the child but central government is saying there are two concepts here one is uh, autonomy reproductive autonomy of a women and another aspect is right of an unborn child and center is telling that uh, abort see aborting this uh, child it is going to a clash between women's reproductive autonomy and this women's reproductive autonomy it cannot take away the right of unborn child under the uh, termination of medical uh, pregnancy medical termination of pregnancy this uh, termination is eligible only there are two conditions have been given if there is a threat to life of mother then it uh, she can go for a termination of a baby or if the uh, fetus if it is facing any deformatory fetal deformatory then she can go for a abortion apart from these two reasons no other reasons have been mentioned and uh, this case was uh, handled by two bench judges now this case has been referred to a larger bench uh, to cji let's see the uh, med uh, medical termination of pregnancy act let's see the details about it see uh, we had a indian penal code of 1860 under this ipc 1860 the voluntary terminating especially abortion it was considered as a criminal offence but later in 1971 the medical termination of pregnancy act of 1971 it has put a ceiling see the women can go for a, a, a abortion till 20 weeks of a pregnancy but later amendment has been done in 2021 uh, medical termination pregnancy act uh, amendment act of 2021 where the gestation period this 20 weeks has been increased to 24 weeks now in this uh, news there is a lady who want to abort a 26 uh, 26 week pregnancy there are two aspects you need to uh, remember here one aspect is the provisions of uh, this act another aspect is the uh, women reproductive right versus 
right of an unborn child from these two aspects you have to see this concept and let's see the provisions of 1971 act and the 2021 act see in 1971 act it was applicable only for the married women and in 2021 it has been extended to unmarried women also and in 1971 one act up to 12 weeks advice of one registered medical practitioner was enough and even now up to 12 weeks abortion advice of one uh, uh, registered medical practitioner is enough and from 12 to 20 weeks advice of two medical registered medical practitioners was necessary and now it has been reduced to advice of one uh, registered medical practitioner and more than 20 weeks in 1971 it is not uh, allowed and now it has been allowed and it is only if there is a substantial fetal abnormality and this has to be approved by state level medical board and finally if the any confidentiality has been breached uh, the person can be imprisoned uh, imprison for a year or a fine or it can be included in both and uh, let's see the previous year questions on this topic regarding maternal health the question this question was asked in 2020 the question is in order to enhance the uh, prospects prospects of social development sound and adequate healthcare policies are needed particularly in the field of geriatric and mater maternal healthcare discuss and this question was asked in 2020 from both aspects you need to answer this uh, geriatric and that means old age and the maternal healthcare these two aspects you need to answer this particular question let's move to the next one the next news is regarding gift city uh, the news is that uh, the foreign firms who want to open a bank account in the gift city they don't need any pan and all these minor details this is what the news is this news is not important but the gift city is important from my exam perspective what exactly is the gift city see the city setup has been created that is called gujarat international financial tech city it is just a financial hub where all the companies all the establishment enterprises in this gift, gift city are related to financial operations only this is India's first and only international financial service center. Here banks can open their offices, stock exchanges like BSC, NSE, they can open their offices and financial services firms are also, they have set up their global operations here. The entire city has been dedicated only for the financial activity and even the city, this particular hub, it has a multi-service special economic zones also. And government is giving a large range of tax exception for those entities who are going to start their international operation. And we have a Singapore arbit arbitration center also, especially if there are any financial disputes uh, for to resolute uh, for the resolution of these disputes. Singapore arbit arbitration arbitration center plays very important role. That is also being constituted in this gift city. Now let's see the topic uh, previous year question on this topic. The question is with reference to international uh, financial service authority consider the following statement there are two two statements uh, it is a statutory body and the se second statement is at present gift uh, ifsc in gujarat is a made in international financial service center in india the answer is both of them are false the next news is regarding inflation here the news article it talks about uh, reduction in the retail inflation initially it was 6.83 percent in august and it has reduced to 5 percent in september this is the news but the uh, the background information regarding inflation is extremely important from exam perspective both wpi as well as uh, consumer price index let me give you guys a brief introduction regarding this topic of inflation see inflation is usually a rise in the price level there will be a base year according to that a comparison will be made and according to the comparative changes inflation percentage rate of inflation is going to be determined and uh, if the rise in inflation it is going to reduce the purchasing power of uh, money usually take it an example of 1 kg apple and if 1 kg apple in august if it is 100 rupees now if the inflation inflation rises if uh, just imagine it as it becomes 150 rupees now there is a rising 50 increase of 50 rupees here see you're paying 50 rupees for the same quantity of uh, apple initially used to pay 100 rupees for one kilo apple now we are paying 150 rupees for one kilo of uh, apple so what it suggests is purchasing power of money has been reduced here so this is what inflation does see having a healthy inflation is good for the economic development but higher inflation is going to affect the economy in a negative way Usually inflation is measured in two indices of uh, wholesale price index and uh, consumer price index. Let me give you guys uh, information regarding both the index uh, here. Wholesale price index is usually measures the change of rate in prices in the wholesale level. 
from wholesale business to business level whatever the price change happens that price change will be measure, measured in uh, WPI and it is really released by Ministry of Commerce and Industry and uh, the base year for WPI is 2011 and 2012 initially it was 2004 and 5 then uh, later on it has been extended it has been changed to 2011 and 2012 based this is considered as a base price and whatever the price change according to according to the 2011 and 2012 base price that the rate will be considered as rate of inflation and next second uh, index is consumer price index and as i told you wholesale price index uh, that index will be calculated from the business to business model and here consumer price index it is usually measured from the perspective of retail buyers especially we uh, common people when we buy goods from the shops this is where cpi index will be calculated and this is released by nso that is national statistical office and uh, the base year of uh, cpi is 2012 the another aspect you have to remember here is it is not only the commodities see wpi mainly focuses on commodities cpi even service uh, 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 sector is also considered this aspect is also considered in cpi the main important commodities and services we consider here is food uh, medical care education electronics all these uh, sectors and perspective will also be considered for cpi and in cpi there are four types uh, uh, this is calculated in a four ways the first thing is cpi for industrial workers second is agricultural labor third is rural labor see all the three which is related to labor activity this is calculated by ministry of labor and employment and the last one the cpi the combined one rural and urban this is calculated by nso and nso it comes under ministry of statistics and program implementation let's see the difference between cpi and wpi as i told you wpi it tracks at the pro producer level from business to business model and cpi it captures the change of price in the consumer level and cp wpi it does not capture the changes of price level in services and cpi it considers both commodities as well as services and wpi it gives more weightage to manufactured goods whereas cpi it gives more weightage to food items let's see the previous year questions also with respect to uh, this topic there are three statements here the first statement is the weightage of food in consumer price index is higher than in uh, in wholesale prices and compare uh, the weightage of food has more uh, in cpi compared to wholesale price index this is the first statement yes it is correct then the second statement is uh, the wpi does not capture change in prices of services which uh, cpi does yes cpi uh, it it consumes sorry it captures the changes in services also where wpi does not uh, consider the change of prices in services and rbi uh, reserve bank of india now adopted wpi as a key measure of inflation to uh, decide on changing key policy rates no this is wrong it considers cpi as a key measure of inflation to uh, find the infl inflationary rates in the country so option a is correct one and two let's move to the next one the next news is regarding global hunger index in this news article it has been uh, mentioned that india has ranked 111 in global uh, hunger index uh, report uh, last year india ranked 107 and even the ranking has de uh, declined this year see usually uh, in indian political sector this report is rejected from indian government the state government and uh, the methodology that has been used to uh, calculate the hunger index this is not accepted by indian government and even at the general public level uh, indian are very skeptical regarding the rating of a uh, global hunger index so if you look at the uh, ratings of other neighboring countries pakistan is 102 bangladesh is 81 nepal is 69 and sri lanka is 60 so if you look at it india is supporting sri lanka by uh, supplying food grains and india is uh, supplying food grains to bangladesh also it is helping nepal also and pakistan you know that it is facing severe food grain crisis and even with all these aspects these countries are having a good numbers good ranking compared compared to india so somewhere india government is not happy with the way this uh, index has been calculated and this report has been officially rejected but since this is in news and uh, even for mains examination these kind of uh, discussion debates it is, it is it is continuously editorials are uh, are all coming on from last one year it was under the debate so let us focus on this particular topic you never know this might these kind of questions might also come in the examination that why government is uh, taking action or uh, rejecting these kind of international report there is a chance uh, let's see in detail so what are the four indicators uh, that this report is based on the first one is undernourishment second one is child wasting third one is child stunting and fourth one is child mortality the rating in the report is based on these four indicators 
let's see the previous year question with respect to this topic the question is which of the following are indicator or indicators used by ifpra to compute the global hunger index report it, this question was asked in 2016 or uh, three options uh, three uh, indicators are given first one is undernourishment second one is child stunting third one is child uh, mortality the option is all the three are correct option c the next news is regarding poxo poxo is protection of children from sexual offenses act uh, it was uh, uh, constituted in 2012 it was passed in 2012 see the news is in delhi the lieutenant governor he has appointed the public prosecutor uh, with regarding to poxo cases this is the news but the thing is poxo is important from exam perspective so rather than going through this news let us focus on back background information of poxo this poxo act of 2012 it is implemented by ministry of women and child development see the main objective of uh, this particular act is to protect children from sexual assault harassment and pornography offenses this is the main objective here and uh, this uh, uh, there is a provision under this act that there will be an establishment of a special court for the trial of such uh, offenses and also uh, this see this act was passed in 2012 and there was an amendment has been done in 2008 and under this amendment the punishment have been enhanced for the POSCO related uh, POCSO related uh, cases let's see the salient features also with respect to this particular uh, act uh, this act is gender neutral both male child or a female child they can file a case against uh, any individual who commits sexual assault or uh, um, violate the sexual dignity of uh, the ch children who are who are uh, under the age of 18 and even if it, there is no reporting of such offenses is also considered an, as an offense if a person knows any information regarding child sexual harassment it is duties is necessary of that person to uh, inform authorities regarding uh, these offenses and there is another provision is there is no time limit for report reporting these cases reporting these abuses even after 10 years uh, the victim can approach the court of law regarding uh, uh, these offenses and another aspect is uh, it is mandatory to maintain the confidentiality or confidentiality of victims identity especially after social media are, uh, rise and even the uh, multimedia uh, it is extremely necessary for uh, these handlers to maintain the confidentiality of victims many a times these news channels even after knowing of the provisions of all these acts and regulations still they reveal the uh, facial identity or the background information regard regarding the victim the court has taken a very strong stand that this is not the right way to handle these things the all these media outlet they should maintain the confidentiality of victims identity these are the salient features of this particular act let's see the previous year questions from uh, uh, on the related to children uh, the question is examining the main provisions of national child policy and throw light on status of its implementation this question was asked in 2016 it means that the question is regarding national child policy so it is asking about the provision so there might questions come in mains with respect to poxo as also maybe asking about salient feature of this particular act or provisions of this particular act and uh, even the further it might ask about uh, uh, drawbacks challenges in this act so there is a possibility let's move to the next one the next news is regarding the money bill see in this news uh, it has been mentioned especially the opposition parties of our country they have filed a case in uh, supreme court the re reason here is what uh, the central government is doing is it is passing so many bills under money bill if a bill has been passed as a money bill lok sabha has a con complete control over money bill and the present uh, ruling party it has a majority in lok sabha and it can easily pass any bill uh, whatever it wants see if there is a ordinary bill then it has to pass both in rajya sabha and it has to pass both in lok sabha and to circumvent this rajya sabha uh, entire process what ruling uh, government is doing what central government is doing is it is uh, declaring ordinary laws ordinary bills also as a money bill and it is uh, it is uh, trying to get the shortcut or uh, to uh, pass these bills and the opposition parties are uh, telling that this is a violation of article 120 article 120 talks about money bill i'll give the background information regarding uh, money bill and various aspects of it but this is the news this is what central government is doing is it this even aadhar bill and so many bills have been passed as a money bill but in real if you look at the various provision there is nowhere it is related to monetary aspects or the financial aspects so for this reason these parties have approached the supreme court that a central government is misusing these aspects so so it is duty of a uh, uh, judiciary now to take uh, action against this activity of central government this is the news but let me give you guys a brief introduction regarding money bill 
Uh, let's see, there are four types of bill, ordinary bill, money bill, financial bill and special bill. Uh, all other bills, ordinary bill, financial bill, special bill, both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, they have equal power. But when it comes to money bill, Lok Sabha has a complete power over money bill. Uh, Rajya Sabha, it can give, it can only give recommendation, it cannot amend or it cannot alter the contents in it. And Lok Sabha, it is up to the discretion power of Lok Sabha whether it can accept the uh, changes that has been suggested by Rajya Sabha or not but ultimately with or without acceptance or the approval of Rajya Sabha money bill is going to be deemed to be passed with the approval of uh, Lok Sabha. Article uh, 1010 it talks about uh, money bill 1010 of our constitution talks about money bill the money bill it mainly related with the appropri appropriation of money from the CFI that is consolidated fund of India usually the re uh, issues relating taxation public expenditure public debt all these aspects come under the money bill see let's see the uh, the important criteria so that you can declare a particular bill as a money bill there are six uh, criteria have been mentioned here if there is any imposition abolition remission alteration or regulation of any tax those issues will be considered as a contents of money bill and if a government of India is borrowing money from outside then that is also considered as a component of money bill and if the custody of a consolidated fund of India or contingency fund of India or payment to the consolidated fund of India or withdrawal money from these contingency or consolidated fund is also comes under the ambit of money bill and appropriation of money out of the consolidated fund of India is also considered as the money bill uh, uh, concept and even expenditure charged on uh, CFI consolidated fund of India is also comes under money bill these are the criteria if a bill deals with any of these aspects then it is considered as money bill and uh, let's see the procedure of uh, passage of uh, this particular money bill as i told you lok sabha has a complete control over money bill see money bill it can be only be introduced in lok sabha and it has to be in, uh, introduced only with the recommendation of president this is the first condition and see money bill are also considered as a government bill if government bill means if a bill is introduced by minister then it is government bill and all the money bill should be introduced by minister only and as i told you lok sabha has a complete power it means that rajya sabha has a very restricted power rajya sabha can only give recommendation neither it can uh, it can amend a bill nor it can reject a bill and Rajya Sabha it has to return a bill to the Lok Sabha within 14 days and uh, it can give a recommendation with or without recommendation and it is the discretion of uh, Lok Sabha whether to accept this recommendation or not ultimately Lok Sabha has a total power with respect to money bill and uh, see this is what central government is doing it is uh, labeling even the ordinary bills and the finance bill or also as a money bill so that it can uh, curtail the discussion in Rajya Sabha and it would be easier for central government to pass the bill and this is what has been filed uh, this aspect has been filed in a court of law regarding that uh, the Lok Sabha the ruling party is circumventing the concept of parliament it is circumventing the constitutional debate also let's see the previous year question with respect to money bill uh, the question is regarding money bill which of the following statements is not correct this question was asked in 2018 the four options are here the first a bill shall be deemed to be money bill if it contains only provisions related to imposition of abolition remission alteration and regulation of tax yes this is correct and bill uh, option b is a money bill has provision for custody of consolidated fund of india or contingency fund of india yes this is correct a money bill is concerned with appropriation of money out of contingency fund of india this is wrong appropriation of money with consolidated fund of india not contingency fund of india so this is wrong so obviously the question as which is which one is not correct it's option c let's see the fourth option also money bill deals with regulation of borrowing of money or giving out any guarantee by government of india yes even borrowing of money from the central government also uh, comes under the ambit of money bill option c is the right option the next news is regarding gaza strip uh, see uh, in the last week videos we have covered the entire concept of uh, israel and palestine issue so i am just going to avoid this particular israel and uh, palestine issues uh, the the historical perspective of us the he news here is the israel has told palestinians to leave the northern gaza see gaza is this thing uh, here you can see this location gaza if just imagine take this is a gaza the northern part uh, the israel government has told the civil civilians in the gaza to leave this northern part and shift to the southern part if you look at uh, gaza the total population is 2.3 million out of this 1 million people they live in the northern part of gaza and israel government 
has told the people who are living in the northern part of Gaza to vacate this region and move toward the uh, southern part. This is the news. But the thing is, let me give you guys uh, background information regarding this particular Gaza Strip. See, you, you have to see this uh, particular news from the ethical perspective also. Is it ethical to uh, relocate or uh, to make exo mass exodus of almost 1 million people to uh, to those areas which is already uh, geographically uh, restricted or ge geographically overpopulated? How fair it is from that perspective, ethical perspective, you have to see this issue. issue. But uh, let me give you guys uh, information regarding Gaza Strip also. Gaza Strip, it is a Palestinian enclave. There are two enclaves in Russia. One is West Bank, another one is Gaza. And uh, West Bank is controlled by Palestinian Authority and Gaza is controlled by Hamas. See, Hamas came into the power in 2006. And uh, since 2006, Hamas is controlling the Gaza Strip. And Hamas is considered in many countries around the world, they have considered um, Hamas as an Islamic terrorist group. And uh, so many countries are also extremely critical regarding the Hamas uh, movements and Hamas attacks on Israel uh, citizens. Actually, Hamas is uh, has been placed under the international economic and political boycott, especially US and Israel. These are leading this particular boycott. Let's see the previous year questions from the geography perspective. Which one of the following countries of Southwest Asia uh, does not open out to the Mediterranean Sea? Option There are four options here. Syria, Jordan, Lebanon and Israel. Option is option B. Jordan is the right answer. The next news is regarding uh, CAA, Citizenship Amendment Act of uh, 2019. News is that uh, Home Minister has given a statement that uh, this Constitution, uh, sorry, Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019, it is going to rescue the Sikhs who are persecuted in the in our neighboring countries. This is the news. But CAA is important from exam perspective. It was continuous, continuously news uh, from past two years, especially regarding this is considered as anti-minority in our country. Uh, those aspects uh, you need to see from the mains perspective. But from the preliminary uh, perspective, let me give you guys the brief introduction regarding the citizenship. Amendment Act. Usually, Citizenship Act, there is a previous act in 1995. This 2019 Act, this is just an amendment to the Citizenship Act of 1955. See, the 1955 Act, it talks about how person is going to get Indian citizenship. And there are five methods have been mentioned here uh, to get the citizenship, either by birth or by descent or by registration, naturalization or incorporation of territory. Through these five methods, a person can get Indian citizenship. And to this act, amendment has been done. There are so many amendments have been done even before also. And the recent amendment is 2019. This amendment has not yet been implemented. You have to uh, remember this particular aspect. See, according to the new amendment, the Indian persecuted uh, minorities I mean to say that, see, if the if you look at the countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, these countries are Islamic majority areas. And which are the minority communities there? Hindu, Sikh, Jain, Buddhist, Parsi, Christian, these are the minority communities. If any of these minority communi com communities who have been per persecuted there, if they come to India, that before 2014, uh, December 31, this is the cutoff period. If anybody enters India before 2014 due to the persecution of uh, minority groups in these countries, then these people are not considered as illegal immigrants. They are considered as Indian citizen and Indian citizenship will be given to these people. This is the criteria. This is the provision of Con uh, Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019. But there is an exception to this particular act. Right? This act does not apply to the six schedule constitution. Six schedule is the, uh, this, uh, these are the scheduled areas belong to Tripura, Mizoram, Assam and Meghalaya. If somebody comes and settles down in this region, they are not going to give the citizenship or the uh, residence rights in this region. So this is the exception you have to remember. Let's see the previous year question uh, from this, uh, on this topic. The question is citizenship, I mean, act, uh, 2019 gets into conflict with India's constitutional values and poses a challenge to internal security and policy for uh, front, foreign policy front. Now, this is the main question. Let's move to the next one. The next news is regarding anti-defection. Uh, see, in Maharashtra Assembly, there was a split in uh, uh, Shiv Sena party. It is a uh, Shinde group and the Uddhav Thakre group. There are two groups now and Uddhav Thakre groups, they consider themselves as a original uh, party members of Shiv Sena and they have complained against Shinde group to the 
uh, speaker of the assembly now supreme court already has a given direction to the speaker of the assembly to take action against the complaint that has been given by uh, uddhav takre group but the speaker who is in favor of shinde group he did not take any action and again second time now court has warned the speaker that it is your duty you have to take action against you have to go for a proceedings against these complaints you have received so this is the news now court is not happy that uh, uh, speaker of Assem maharashtra assembly is not taking any actions regarding disqualification proceeding uh, proceeding this is the news but anti defection is important from exam perspective let's see the background information of uh, defection See, the main objective behind uh, anti-defection law is to prevent uh, uh, the practice of legislator moving from one uh, changing one political parties to another political party. It used to happen a lot before. So, this anti-defection law has been passed and it has been added to the constitution also to prevent this practice uh, of legislator going from one political party to another political party. And this has been added to the 10th schedule and uh, this is the 52nd amendment in 1985 and see uh, the, de the decision of disqualification it is uh, decided by either chairman or the speaker depend on the uh, upper house or the lower house and even for that matter it is uh, council or the assembly. The one aspect you have to remember is this particular law it does not talk about any time frame. See, for members in a, a parliament or a members of an assembly, if they complain to the speaker that we are not happy with it, so you need to go for a proceedings uh, with respect to disqualification of member. And in law in constitution, no time frame has been mentioned. He can take action at any time whenever he suits uh, it's comfortable. But in many cases, Supreme Court has uh, uh, made a uh, observation it has to it has mentioned that whatever the anti-defection cases are there this these should be decided within a three months time this was directions given by supreme court but here the speaker of maharashtra assembly he has not taken any actions against the proceedings so supreme court has reminded him that it is uh, it goes against the directions given by the supreme court and let's see the grounds for defection on what basis you can remove the member from the assembly of parliament see if a member if, if he voluntarily gives up the membership of a political party then he can be uh, removed under the defection and if a member vote against or abstains he is absent uh, against the the uh, directions given by a political party at that time yes uh, the political party can initiate the defection process and if an independent member he joins any political party again he is eligible for a uh, defection and if a nominated member if he joins political party after six months he can join any party within six months after six months if he joins any political party again he is uh, liable for the and uh, process against anti-defection these are the things and there is an exception to it uh, to this defection see when the this act has been passed in 1985 at that time they have mentioned that if one third of members if they decide to leave the political party and if they join some other party then these one third members are not uh, removed or uh, these are not eligible to be defected from the parliament or assembly it means that if they want to join another political party it is legal it is legally uh, viable option it is legally supported they cannot uh, they cannot be suspended or dismissed but in 90 uh, in uh, after few years there was another amendment has been done in that is 91st constitution amendment act under this under this act they have made a change to the defection procedure before it is one third of member if they there was an option that one third members could leave the political party and they could join another political party now they made this option also very stricter now it is necessary that two third members of political party if they leave the party and join with another party, if two third members are in favor of merger, then it is not considered as a defection. These are the two exceptions uh, you have to remember. Let's see the previous year question uh, with respect to this topic. The question is, uh, this question was asked in 2014, it's a simple question. Which one of the following schedules of the constitution of India contains provision regarding anti-defection? I just told you it is the 10th schedule. The next news is regarding P P20 summit. P20 summit is going to happen in uh, Delhi. P20 is one among the summit with works under G20 only. P20 is nothing but parliamentary speakers summit. The first time P20 summit was held in Canada in 2010. After that, every year it has been conducted and during COVID it has not been constituted. But every year there will be uh, a summit with respect to parliamentary speakers, uh, uh, their discussion and congregation. 
and this year it is happening in Delhi and the theme is parliaments for one earth, one family and one future. This is nothing but Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The G20 theme is also Vasudeva Kutumbakam and in P20 it is parliaments for Vasudeva Kutumbakam. That extension you can uh, uh, link related here and there are four uh, high level sessions are going to happen. The four different uh, concepts here. The first session will be on SDG that is sustainable developmental the development goals and the second session will be sustainable, sustainable energy transition. It is about the, the green energy and the third one is women led development and the fourth aspect is public digital platforms it is nothing but upi all these things so india will be guiding other countries in this perspective to develop a public uh, digital platforms and another aspect you have to focus here is life is beautiful in the life initiative uh, life uh, it talks about adopting lifestyle for the environment. It means that even our day-to-day -day activities, we make it as a pro-environment so that every action of ours in a day-to-day -day life is going to affect the environmental conservation in a positive way. And uh, this year, even African Union has also joined a G20 so that Pan-African Parliament is also going to take part in P20 Summit this year. This is the first time, as I told you, uh, African Union, it, it added, African Union entered the G20. So, as a representative of uh, African Union, Pan-African Parliament is also going to take part in the P20 Summit and it is going to happen in the New Delhi. Let's see the previous year, year question uh, with respect to this topic. There are two statements uh, given here. The G20 group was originally established as a platform for finance ministers and central bank governors to discuss international economic and financial issues. Yes, this is correct. Second option is digital public infrastructure is one of the G20 priorities. Yes, this is also correct. Option C, both. The next news is regarding IMEC. This is very important news this year. This initiative is also taken in G20 summit in Delhi. And IMEC stands for India Middle East European Union Economic Corridor. It connects India with European Union and also it integrates the entire Middle East region. Uh, it, this is multimodal connectivity. There is rail connectivity, there is uh, roadway connectivity and it mainly uh, uh, goes through UAE and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. But even other countries like Oman, Yemen, Qatar, uh, Bahrain, all these countries are also going to be integrated. And uh, even here in the region of Israel, Jordan is also going to be part of uh, this particular IMEC corridor and USA is actively supporting the entire initiative. See the main objective here is it want uh, India to be an active player in the region. It don't want uh, China to fill the vacuum where uh, US, is, US is taking a step back from the Middle East. It is now mainly focusing on Ukraine and Russia region and uh, South China Sea. So the vacuum created by US in this region, U USA wants India to play an active role uh, because Ch if China enters the region, it is going to be detrimental it is going to be difficult for usa to handle the issues in this region so usa is actively involving actively pushing for india's role and one among the initiative in that direction is imec the countries involved here is india U eu european union saudi arabia uae germany france italy usc they have agreed to establish this imec corridor and it is expected to stimulate economic development through enhanced connectivity between asia arabian peninsula and europe See, we already have a Suez Canal now. Suez Canal, we have a uh, connectivity to Europe. But this particular IMEC, it acts as a supplement to existing maritime and road transport. And it is extremely important also, if something happens, if some mishaps happen in the Suez Canal, then the entire uh, trade is going to be stagnant. And this is what happened a uh, few months ago, where a ship was struck in the entire canal and it uh, affected the trade of uh, entire uh, the value chain in that region. So this IMEC is going to act as an alternative and it also gives that infrastructure development to the Arabian Peninsula also. This was announced in G20 summit in Delhi. There are two co corridors you have to remember. One is Eastern Corridor, second one is Northern Corridor. Eastern Corridor connects India and Arabian Gulf and the Northern Corridor uh, connects with Arabian uh, Peninsula to the Europe. And let's see the uh, question with respect to this particular topic. This is the main question. With global task of G20 presidency turned towards India's table, discuss the India's role as a leader of Global South. This completes uh, this uh, week's current affairs. I'll see you again uh, in the next week, next week current affairs. Every day I'll upload uh, editorials also. Uh, you can get this PDF in the netbook study uh, telegram channel. The link has been mentioned in the description. Thank you for listening. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good time.